producer is the one who believes in the pro in the process. And um, I was asked after I, I wrote a positive review of a play, uh, a 99 seat play here, uh, to have lunch with some of the uh, artistic people and, and give uh, why they you know wanted some advice or where they should go. I said fine. I. I I go when I'm invited, like I said before. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I, I actually, I actually paid. Uh, I, I, I had to, I had to, you know. Anyway, I, point was, I asked them. So, what's your business model? What's your business plan? Business model, business plan, marketing. What's your mission statement? They didn't have one. And this was a, this is a feisty young company with a lot of talent there, and, you know, if you're if you're putting on plays to express yourself, you can't be surprised if people don't rush to the doors just to see your self-expression. You know, there's another word for sheer self-expression. <laughs> <laughs> if you are, a, if you, but if you are associated with a good producer, then, or if you are a good producer, then you'll put on plays that allow you to express your artistic sensibility in ways that we all want to come see. That's what the producing is. And, and until we have producing models in this town that take risks and, and use the little money that there is and find the plays and the artists who will, ex who will bring these, uh, uh, these struggles that Stephen was talking about to the stage, you know, you can, you can put your time into like, this great revival of Come Blow Your Horn that you think, or, or Uncle Vanya, that you think is going to make you look great, but there's nothing there that, there's no want to see there. So I think the producers determine the want to see, and that's what needs to become more mature, is, is the, the producing aspect of theater on every level from top to bottom. That's my feeling. Don? I agree with that, I don't, but I want to pick up on something Stephen said about the assault on labor. I, as we were coming through the door to be on this panel, I was presented with a, 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 something I had to sign, which was a release because of the uh, live streaming of this session. And while I was talking to this, I, I don't know if you're still here, probably are. Um, where, well, while I was talking to this man who, was, who had this um, for me to sign, I asked him, what, I, I didn't realize there was really much union, that the unions had much of anything to do with the Fringe Festival. And I said, how many of the actors in this festival actually are, have to sign these papers? How many of them are members of unions? And he told me that there are about eight SAG members here in the Fringe, and there is one actor's equity member here in the fringe. That's in the streaming portion only, though. Ah. Which is only here, so. Yeah, it's only at this venue. Oh, OK. All right. So I would, but I, I mean, I do get the feeling that, that the fringe doesn't. How, how many of these shows here are paying their, their talent anything whatsoever? My show. Well, that's good. <laughs> but is there any way to trace that? Is there any way to trace that to find out? If you, I mean, the fringe organizers don't ask that question, do they? No, because it's an independent it's economic an independent model that allows you to fail if you fail and succeed yeah. if you succeed. Some, some shows pay, but are not. You need no union members to be paid. Well, this is one of the conundrums about LA theater. First of all, geographically, it can never be New York or Chicago. And there's something to be said about that close contact and the buzz that generates artistic self expression. Also, in LA, we have a problem with equity because equity has hindered some production. Some mid-sized houses are now forced to do two-person shows. And playwrights are now forcing themselves to write two- and three-person shows, staying away from larger shows, so that they can be produced at South Coast Rep, and even shows that come to the Amundsen now, three and four people. So I think the way for LA to survive is to create these clumps of energy. I think what Ensemble Studio Theater and Circle X did is a very good model, where two companies pool their resources and open up a theater complex. It would be great if Hollywood could have a 20 block radius of theaters so that we could create that hub. But I think without, without community, in fact, when I was at the Asian American Festival recently, the conference, I asked one girl, why an Asian American conference? She said, because it's easier to get a grant. Yeah. So there is something to be said about sticking with community and pooling our resources and feeding off each other's artistic merits. A question from the phone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our, Who are these guys? Someone, someone on the other end of this thing. 
<laughs> wants to know how many of you covered the fringe and how many of you actually came and attended just out of your own curiosity? I know time, I've seen you at lots of shows. I did both. Yeah. Did both. I was out of town on a, a prearranged assignment last week, but I've mm -hmm. seen about six of the shows. Uh, our total is, if we do all that we have reservations for this weekend, we'll be 40 shows. I've seen 14 so far, and I will see more this weekend. I haven't written about any of them yet. By the way, I do have another question for fringe organizers. Yesterday, I received an email inviting me to be a judge in the uh, Fringe Awards. And I, I don't think I should be a judge in the fringe, fringe Awards if I have seen only 14 out of how many shows? More than 200? There's, there's sponsored awards. So there's several different awards going on at the, at the festival. That was probably a solicitation for you to personally sponsor an award. So it would be like, you know. Well, I don't know. It's, it's, that, that, that wants to sponsor an award. No, no, I mean, it's, it was inviting me to be a judge in the Fringe Awards, and I had to get my ballot in by 1 p.m. tomorrow. Oh, sure, yeah. Well, there, there are audience awards that people follow. So I, I was wondering how, who, how many people have to see. I mean, you have no way of even tracking how many shows I've seen, I don't think. So how, how is there a minimum number of shows that you have to see before you judge on what's the best There's of the Fringe? complicated algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt? We are also doing, I'm actually at uh, 50 shows right now and hope to see 59. I'm trying to be a good producer and see as much as possible. Um, also in the sense of community and all that, I'm very excited to be working with uh, Olia and Dolly uh, to bring artworks and after circle into the whole thing to kind of increase it and, and really give support. Um, I've got to run back to the box office, but I really think this conversation is important for producers to talk and we do need to be better as these responsibilities come up. I do think with something like Best of Friends, we can help bring shows up to the audience and to you guys and maybe get a chance to see. We're also talking about separating the solo work shows to allow a separate festival to highlight some of these shows that really are worth the risk to see. But understand, I mean, I saw a ton of solo shows, and that's why the decision to kind of bring it together. Um, I really look forward to this growing. I think there's a big shift in theater that we need to look at. Your job's changing, our job is changing. The more that we can all do this, I think the better. Thank you, and sorry for my earlier outburst for solo work, just kind of getting <laughs> it out there. But thank you all, and excuse me as I actually have to get out of here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Natural um, segue here as we're moving can along. Can we continue with your previous question? I'll answer that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, any Sorry, I'm, any? Yeah. Um, I'm personally not seeing anything. I've got a, I'm working on a deadline, but I've assigned all the edge critics to cover shows, so we're going to cover probably 20 or more with the uh, other people on my staff. Uh, I've only seen one show, and uh, I apologize for that, but I, I was very, very uh, involved in the Radar LA Festival, which just ate into that, and which I thought was an extraordinarily important festival. In my personal opinion, although every one of you could just gang up on me now, <laughs> Radar, Radar LA was much more important than the Hollywood Fringe Festival because it brought to our, to our city everything the city hasn't had in the theater. And that, that was important to me. I mean, when you, see what, when you see a play like Neva and you see that a group like that can create doing an artistic work about serious stuff in an, in an artistic way, and out of a real political commitment uh, and emotional commitment, uh, that, that's important. I don't see anything like that here. When I saw it, my first reaction was, God, it's been years since I saw this. I remember when I saw Bruzy and Willie last year, I got as excited as I did because I hadn't seen anything like it here for a long time. Now in context with the Radar Festival, Bruzy and Willie was one of many things and not an outstanding thing particularly. And so that was interesting to me. And I think it's not so interesting. I mean, my experience last night at, at, at what I saw last night was <laughs>